Well, it's everyone's least favorite time of year. Yeah, tax season. But whether you're trying to muddle through on your own or if you're hiring someone to do the heavy lifting for you, there are some big changes this year to look out for. And of course, who else would we have? Tell us all about that. We want to welcome back our favorite financial guru, the president of Game Time Budgeting, Al Riddick. Al, thanks for talking to us today. We really need your help. Hello, Mona. It's so good to see your smiling face again. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so how did 2020 impact the gig economy, and how should gig workers prepare for the tax season? And maybe explain what gig workers are. First of all, so to explain what gig workers are, uh, these are individuals who may be considered freelancers or sole proprietors or individuals that may be a single member LLC. You pretty much have your side hustle working for you. So in 2020, we actually saw the highest number of gig workers ever in this country. It was about 40% of the United States workforce. But when it comes to filing your taxes, Mona, there's one thing everybody needs to remember if you're a gig worker. Gig worker. Number one, do not mess with the IRS. So you need to be able to document all of your revenue streams, also document all of your expenses as well, because if you can't prove it with documentation, if you're filing your taxes correctly, it never happened in the eyes of the government. Plus, when you do become a gig worker, it actually allows you to uh, take advantage of a lot of the deductions in the IRS tax code. Um, I'm stressing everyone actually Google um, publication 334, or you could just go to the irs.gov website, and it is the tax guide for small businesses, particularly if you're completing form Schedule C, which is the uh, profit and loss from business. All right. All right. Well, what, what about people's income that just dropped last year? And maybe they didn't receive the amount they were due in a stimulus payment. So what can they do? If your income unfortunately took a hit, you can actually claim the recovery rebate credit. Um, again, if your income did go down or if you had a baby in 2020 and you did not receive credit for that new dependent in your life, again, you can uh, claim the recovery rebate credit, which will show up on line 30 of your 1040 form. Okay, you know, and Al, you know, many people worked from home during 2020 due to the pandemic, but are there any deductions that we, because I'm here at home, can include on our taxes? In a short answer, Mona, unfortunately, the answer <laughs> is no, but let me tell you ah. why. Uh, when, back in 2017, when the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was signed into law, uh, it took away the ability to deduct business expenses or re unreimburse business expenses if they accounted for more than 2% of your adjusted gross income. So if you're working from home and you are an employee of a company, you don't have anything that you can write off. However, However, if you do have a side hustle and you're a business owner, there are tons of things you can write off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I guess I'll just have to buy that printer ink out of my pocket. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Unfortunately, we all know the pandemic forced some people to receive unemployment benefits. So how was this income treated during tax season? So most of the unemployment benefits uh, are taxable. Uh, one thing that the viewers should know is that when President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan, he actually made the first $10,200 $10, of unemployment benefits. That income is not taxable. So, of course, that um, will be a big benefit for individuals that did have to apply for unemployment benefits. Also, when you think about unemployment benefits, if you have not received what is called a Form 1099-G, which represents certain government payments from uh, unemployment benefits, you can go again to irs.gov and just type in interactive tax assistant in the search bar, and you can just go through a couple of screens there to see whether or not the money you received is actually taxable. Because believe it or not, Mona, depending on the source of your unemployment benefit, some of that money is not taxable at all. Oh, wow. All right. It seems like people are going to have a lot of questions for you, Al. So how can they connect with you? 
If individuals want to reach out, please visit GameTimeBudgeting.com, or I'd love to hear from you here at the office, and that number is 513-813-3275. And Mona, I must say, happy belated birthday. <laughs> Why, thank you so much. And Al, I'm going to say, don't mess with the IRS. And for everybody at home, we'll be right back. <laughs> 